Welcome to Haxby Shed and part two, the final part, of adjusting the spindle bearings on this Harrison vertical milling head. Now if you saw part one you know that the top bearing inner was seized on the spindle and I put it in the lathe and I took a bit off it, I took off slightly too much, probably by about a hundredth of a millimetre, half a thou, maybe even less than that. And a number of people have commented, well I could have just knurled the surface slightly of the bearing journal where it goes on, uh, or I could have popped it with a centre punch, or I could have formed some lines on it, and I certainly could have done, but I'd used the Loctite before I read those comments. Even so, I think it works fine. It feels quite stiff today, but it's quite chilly in here, but otherwise, I think the job's done. I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, in the background, I've been working on my new-to-me machine. I'm going to have to make another bronze nut. Can you hear it? Well, that's quite a long way off yet. I just thought I'd give you a teaser. Oh, here's the cable for it as well. Enjoy. Well, boo-hoo, <laughs> I've taken a fraction too much off this. It's reading exactly where, what I thought it should be. 34.925, which should be one and three eighths exactly. But when I put the bearing on now, it's too loose. Well, it's very difficult to get this started. There we are. So by here, it's binding up, which is kind of all right, but here it's a bit too loose. And there's a risk that the inner will spin. This will lock and the inner will spin. So I'll need to put it on with some bearing shaft sealer, lock type, the right type. I would have preferred to get this spot on. I mean, it's not undersized by very much, you know, maybe half a thou or something like that. I mean, there's no feel to it. I can't feel any rock or anything but it should have been just a very light tap fit. So I've just gone a bit under. That's annoying, isn't it? Hmm. Well, that's what happens when you go by measurement and I should have stopped earlier and gone more by feel, but it's very difficult to get this started on the end of this shaft. Never mind, not a disaster. At least I'll be able to set the preload now. So you can see I've fitted the spindle into the housing without any of the internal gubbinry. I really am quite annoyed with myself for taking too much off this. But one effect of that is I get a very good feel for the amount of play on these bearings. I mean, how they ever could have set these correctly with a three ton press fit, I just cannot imagine. It's a bit of a rubbish design anyway. Well, I blame the design, obviously. I've got some Loctite 641 there, which is medium grade bearing retaining fluid. And I looked on uh, YouTube last night and I watched a couple of Loctite videos about how to use it. So I think it's going to be fine. It takes about six hours to cure to about 90%. Anyway, I want to show you something at the top here. So I've been adjusting up this collar and just checking it with my fingers to see if I can get it right. And I've put this strike on there and a couple of dots to see where I am. And the thread on this collar is so coarse that you barely have to move it any degree to completely change the setting from too loose to too tight. So if I put that against the top dot, it's too loose and I can feel end float. About where it is now is about right, I think. If I moved it, you know, one dot further round, if I was to dot it here, that would be too tight and they would be binding up. So it's very difficult to get them spot on. And because I'm going to use a retaining fluid now, I've only got a certain amount of time. Uh, if it starts to chatter on the machine, well, I just have to work that out. I'd have to get the collar off, get the bearing out, degrease it, clean it up, repeat. But at least I'd have a reference. You know, these dots would give me a reference. I think we all know that there should be a little bit of end float on taper bearings, just a fraction. And this washer, look, sits before this collar. I guess it's there to spread the load. 
on this uh, inner race. But it does mean when these are adjusted correctly, this is free to move a little bit. Okay, it takes a little push to do it. But look at the amount of movement on it. So I'm going to put an O-ring in there just to try and settle it down and keep it sort of centered. I think those two small rings will keep it centered. I'm going to put this back on the machine now and I'm going to fill it with oil and then I'm going to swivel the head and see whether or not I can get it over to 90 without any oil going down here through this baffle sleeve. I've got it in my mind that you can only go to 45 degrees. I think I read it somewhere but it's kind of unproven. So we'll just try it out by experiment and see. This is one of those tests that feels like a complete waste of time now, but it won't be later. I've got to put this bevel cross shaft on. Now when I rotate that, it's as smooth as anything. There's no drag whatsoever. So that's what I've got to be aiming for when I put the spindle in. Anyway, we'll pop this in with a couple of screws. Doesn't matter which orientation, does it? And then this will seal the hole up and then I can fill it with oil on the head. Well, with the head on the machine is what I'm trying to say. I've got some old 2050 oil. This will do. When I say old, I don't mean it's used. I just mean there's a bit left in the bottom. I'll just take it up to the level. Watching the sight glass here. So I've got the level right and we'll try it on its back. If that seems okay, we'll put this plate on and try the other side. I'm going to have to look into this. It's all right so far. Oh, well, that's got to 90 without any problem. You wouldn't be able to go much further though, because the oil would start to fill this top bearing here. Mm, okay. So the 45 degree restriction on that side is an urban myth. Probably one I invented. Mm -hmm. The nuts are nipping up now, but yeah, we could get a bit further than that, a bit over 90. Right, we'll put the plate on and try the other side. So going anti-clockwise, I can get to 105 degrees before there would be danger of the oil getting into this top bearing. So now let's go the other way. Now the only way of knowing, because I've covered this up and I can't see in really, not easily, um, would be just to see if any oil starts coming out somewhere. Sorry, the nuts are nipping up now. Oh, this one's nipped up. There we go. That's it. Right, that's 90. And nothing has leaked. Oh, it's nowhere near now on that side. Well, it's nowhere near. You go a lot further this side. There must be just more capacity in this bit here. Well, this is going to be... Sorry, I know this is exciting, isn't it? Where are we up to? Can't even see the marks on here. 90, 100, 110, 120, 125. Not that you'd be likely doing this. At least 125. Let's call it that, 125. Actually, 130 before it's the oil's just sitting below this edge here. Now when the thing's spinning, it's going to throw the oil around a bit. But it would def definitely be safe 90 to 90. There's no question about that. That's at 90 now. And that's well down inside. So that's been very useful. So this is turning back anti-clockwise with the lid off. And that's 105 degrees and you can see where the oil is relative to that um, baffle plate otherwise known as a hole <laughs> with no seal on it there you go just from the top getting ready to put this back together and i've discovered that one of these bronze or brass buttons is missing from this ring that sits just above the bevel so i've got two in and the third one is missing. That one there. Well, I've taken the screw out anyway, but it's missing. 
so I'm having to make another and this is the attempt hold on there we are so I've had to try and cut the threads in it they all have those kind of thread grooves I don't know how they're made and I'm trying to get it to match this you won't be able to see but you get the idea well it's near enough so I'll cut it off and pop it in the hole as a substitute I've looked all over the place and I kept everything together and I kept it in a tray or on this newspaper so yeah, I don't think I've lost it hopefully you can see there's mine in place I don't think I'll be able to show this very easily but here goes the key is in and now we need to put this one on first line up the key oh hang on now all the bits have got to go in first that one that one uh, the bevel so everything's in now the key has got to go through this first collar oh <laughs> I tell you what the keys dropped out right this is gonna be fun isn't it here's the trick you do it upside down Put them in a stack get the keys lined up you can look in from above and drop this in in the right position that key I had to turn it round because it wouldn't engage the way I'd put it in first off so if I wiggle all this and uh, I'll have to get it up off the bench obviously keep wiggling I should get through the keyways well I got there but that was a bit of a fight there's no top bearing in yet this bevel is going to have to be set against this cross shaft here later on I haven't put any grease in the bearings because I want to be able to feel I've cleaned the inside of this bearing I've cleaned all this now the video I saw from Loctite just put a ring around here and then just push the bearing on and that was enough apparently so I'm going to lay it over and just dribble a ring around there Try not to jam it. There we go. That goes over the O-rings just to keep that in place. Nip this up to my marks. Stay where you are. Okay. Do you know this is no more than finger tight? Just there. That feels good. It's actually just past my, oh it's quite a bit past my mark actually, but I have smacked smack this bottom end. Mm. You know I think that's okay, I'll nip this up and make sure it's clamped evenly. It may cockle over when I tighten it up or change somehow. Mm. Sorry, I'm sure my hands are in the way. I'm wondering if that isn't slightly tight, you know. Let's experiment. I'm happy with that. You can hear the rollers just rattle ever so slightly. And that's my mark. And that's where I put the pip on there. So I'm just after that second pip that'll do I've just put a smear of hylomar on this and those three drain holes need to go at the bottom and I've moved the bevel up the one that this is engaging to so it's not going to interfere
and I think I've left the Allen key in the other room. Never mind. Just get one in so that it doesn't fall off, which it easily could, knowing my luck. I'm happy with the set on the bevel. If I just put my microphone down there, you might just hear a little click. Depends what position you're in. I think that's okay. Well, we'll leave this overnight for that bearing retainer fluid to go off and probably fit this tomorrow. When I turn the spindle from the bottom here, it's so completely different from what it was. There's no kind of grunchy feeling, no binding feeling. It just runs so smoothly now. I've cleaned out the end caps, fitted them, greased it all up. I put as much grease in as I could before I added the end caps and then I just pumped it in. Lithium grease as specified in the manual. Now that I turn it, it's a lot stiffer with that grease in. So, you know, it sounds like that I'm uh, coming up with uh, benefits of my mistake, but actually, I don't think you could set those uh, taper bearings with that grease in. There's just too much drag, you've no feel. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Get this on, get some oil in, turn it over on the machine then. Well that's been running at 1500 for quite a long time and this top end is cool. Now that was getting hot before, it's not now, but this bottom end has got hot. Well the pressure on the two bearings must be equal, so I think maybe I've got the bevel a little bit too tight, so I'll take this cover off and I'll adjust that. Yes, it was too tight. There was no play on it at all. Now I'll just move close to this and you'll be able to hear it click. I have to put the torch down. Just a little bit. Didn't have that before. See if you can hear this. This little click is the clearance on the bevel in here. Okay, but this, that's the play in the key on the gear on the back of this cross shaft here. So I think I'm gonna make a new key for that. I'm not gonna video it, I'll just do it offline. So it's a quarter key. It says it's a quarter key by half long and I've got some quarter key steel. Yeah, easy enough to fix that. Just means taking it off again. Yeah, so that's just the bevel. This is the oil that I took out. Oh, well that was really stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> Dummy. 